Hey, what's up, team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. This video is on activity-based leveling or usage-based leveling. And uh, what I mean by that is it's not, like, life in general is not, like, you do something and then instantly you've unlocked the skill and you're able to perfectly perform that task forever. <laughs> it's a matter of slow increments of growth you know it's like swinging your sword for the first time it's gonna be awkward it's gonna be really weird and you're gonna do like no damage you're gonna miss and then you get to maybe three proficiency and okay maybe you hit once okay and then it goes up you're at 25 okay that's pretty good and then you just continue to level that up until you've essentially perfected the ability and, and unlocked the skill of using it. And this is with everything in life. It's everything is like this. For example, um, when I first decided to come to Japan, well, I didn't, well, yeah, let's say I decided. <laughs> I was really wishy-washy about it. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. It's scary leaving the country and all that stuff. Didn't know any Japanese. I had studied Spanish for about three years, right, in uh, in high school, but Japanese was like, I, I knew nothing about it, nothing at all, and so I remember I'm sitting in our Japanese class after I've been accepted to the program uh, to come to Japan. This is in 2003, a long time ago, when I was like 18, yeah, um, yeah. And so I'm sitting in class and we're learning like how to count to 10. And I remember freaking out about it. I was like, I'm never going to be able to do this. These words are so strange and foreign to me. And like the grammar structure, I was like, I will not be able to do this. And I remember freaking out. And I came to Japan and couldn't speak any Japanese and as expected, right? After like one or three months of studying, whatever it was. And um, so I remember watching my friends who I was looking up to in Japanese ability because they had studied it for longer than me and they're extroverts and they spoke a lot. So um, I watched them just constantly trip over every rock and fumble and fumble and fumble and actually become able to speak clearly and and very well I thought and in the meanwhile I'm sitting there like I'm going to perfect this grammar and learn these words before I say anything <laughs> and it was like me trying to unlock that one key ability by some experience and not actually even getting experience it was like I'm just going to surround myself by it and not actually take the actions and then eventually I'll be able to do it. And so what I'm getting at with this is it's a matter of using the skills, even if you suck at them, constantly, again and again and again, until you are able to actually hit with those skills and apply those abilities instead of just swinging and missing all the time. And, <laughs> you know, eventually when I started to speak, um, the second time I came back to Japan, you know, the first nine months, it was okay. I felt like I could actually speak a little bit at the end, but it was good listening skills, right? And then I went home and I came back again and I was forced to speak in front of massive crowds of people in Japanese. And by doing that, I actually improved a lot. And it's just because I used it. I forced myself out of my comfort zone or I was forced out of my comfort zone by my work and um, it was it was great and that's how I learned right and this like I was saying works with everything it works with the cognitive functions I feel like I might suck with um, introverted thinking and like reasoning analysis and things like that and I do really suck with that stuff but if I were to intentionally use it over and over again and put myself in those awkward situations and force myself to learn those models and things, 
I would be able to eventually do it a lot better than I can now. And I'm not just going to unlock the ability somehow. I'm not going to instantly have like arcane blast. It's not going to come out, you know, <laughs> like I need to put on the robe a little bit. I need to, to study the spell books a little bit before I can do any of that stuff. Right. And um, one more thing that this kind of comes back to is confidence. And it's not a matter of having confidence. Um, I've always liked the idea of doing confidence. Like we all have it within us. And it's not like, uh, I, I'm not confident, so I can't do this thing. It's a matter of creating it, generating it and doing it. And by doing that, by taking an action, doing something, you get feedback. And by getting that feedback, your pool of experience goes up, it increases. And you have the choice with that feedback to incorporate it and to do confidence again, take that and, and adjust and do it again in order to improve. Or you can take that feedback as negative or whatever and sit on it and be afraid of doing anything again and just continue to downward spiral. So it's a matter of just asserting yourself, taking confidence, doing confidence, taking action and uh, getting things done. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. I know it's a little strange. It's not necessarily cognitive function based uh, but it is personal growth and it's related to video games. So I hope that it was helpful a little bit. These videos are also a part of me trying to get better at this skill. Like it's something that's awkward for me, right? But by making videos, by trying, by putting myself out there into the public, into the scary public, I'm able to get feedback and change myself and adapt or not. You know, if, if that's what I want to do, I can just sit on any negative comments or whatever. I'm not saying that you should have negative comments. Don't do that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck. Have fun. Peace.